Um, good, morning, good morning. Now, your monologues started how? They've taken on a life of their own. People who might be watching GB News at this time of the day don't necessarily watch on a Saturday. So how did they come about in the first place? And did you ever expect them to become so, um, just so well loved? I certainly didn't. The thought never really crossed my mind. It began, Bev, because um, when I did my very first show, uh, right at, the, right at the, the, the first week of uh, GB News, I felt completely incongruous and out of place because, uh, because I had come from a background of doing something else entirely, you know, making history and archaeology documentaries. Uh, and I felt that I ought to declare that sense of feeling strange about what I was doing. So I just delivered a few minutes worth of monologue that first night to, to fess up and say, if you think it looks, you're surprised to see me sitting here, you can only imagine how how uh, I reciprocate that, that feeling of strangeness. And having done it once, uh, it just seems to become the pattern, the format. And I've been delivering a 10-minute monologue every every week uh, on the show. Um, and yes, they, they have seemed to strike a chord. And uh, I, I just keep doing it because I, I, mm. I sense there's an audience out there who you know, who want to hear vocalised their thoughts and they can't do it and they find that I do. I, I kind of wonder, Neil, whether, you know, as we're a more secular society now, you've almost taken the, the position of the church. Like, to some extent, people sit around and listen to your uh, monologues in the same way that you might have listened to a vicar uh, in days gone by, because I feel like there is something missing. There was, clearly, there was clearly a gap in people's lives, wasn't there, that you've come along with your words and, and you, you feel that need for people to hear something inspiring. I think perhaps, well, it's maybe because a lot of people watch it on a Sunday morning. <laughs> maybe that's got something to do with why it, why it feels a bit churchy. But I, th I think I uh, there's so many millions of people out there uh, who who feel silenced. They, they're they're filled to the brim with you know a, a passionate sense of something gone badly wrong, uh, and out, out with their own family homes, they, they have nowhere to say it. Uh, and you know, and a lot of that kind of comment, that kind of uh, that side of the debate has been silenced and censored anyway. And perhaps there's a relief in, in, in at second hand hearing mm. and seeing someone else say what I regard. I regard what I'm saying as just being the 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 opinion of the ordinary, regular, decent people, millions of them who who feel that their point of view is not being expressed. And if I can if I can do something to alleviate that that sense of being you know trapped and silenced, then. You know, I'm only grateful to have the opportunity to do it. How do you, where do you come up with your ideas, Neil? Do, you, do they sort of marinate throughout the week or do you wake up on a Saturday morning with a flash of inspiration and get down your thousand words? It's, it's all sorts. Sometimes I know, you know, days ahead what I'm, what I'm going to talk about. You know, I'll have, I'll have a particular bee in my bonnet about something that's happening. Uh, and for the, for the longest time, it was it was consistently about lockdown, about the harms, about the, the, the devastation that so many of us could see coming and felt that we were watching unfold like a slow motion car wreck. Uh, so uh, quite often the, the topics suggested themselves. As time has gone on, uh, I have moved on into other areas, you know, con considering that, you know, financial implications, you know, looking into the, the, the shenanigans of various political figures. I'll be honest with my wife, Trudy and I, we, we talk endlessly. You know, I, I work from I work from home. I, I write and, and I'm here through the week and, and Trudy and I talk all the time about what's going on. And very often the, the monologue is a product of those conversations. And, and when I write it, mostly I write it on a, a Saturday morning. You know, I, I try to, to make sure that it can be as fresh and as up to date as possible. And, you know, when I've got when I've got something together, uh, you know, uh, uh, written down, I share it with Trudy, you know, back here. And I'll be in London. She'll be back home here in Stirling. And we we pass it back and forth. And Trudy, will, you know, edits it with me. And it's quite collegiate. It's very collegiate. We, you know, we, we, we make sure that we're both in, in agreement about what I'm going to do. So. Uh, it's, and she's, I'm and just, of course, and, and, and Trudy uh, was and is a journalist, so she knows what she's yes. doing. So it's nice of you to give her yes. a bit of credit <laughs> for that publicly. Um, well, no, it's no, it's 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 but it's 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 important though because it, it, is. Is, it is the fact that it's a it's a it's a conversation. You know, it's it's a thought mm. that you know one of us has, or you know, I have, or she has. You know, I, I write something down, start it off, and then it, it, it develops from there. I mean, I'm, I'm only being honest in saying exactly how the how the thing takes shape. 
And it's actually, what's so interesting for me, Neil, of course, is how these fly on social media. And actually, it's one of the ways that GB News is, is pretty much leading the way in this in terms of digital media, because your view, your, your monologues sometimes get, I mean, what's the most that any of them have had? You had one a couple of weeks ago that went huge, didn't it? Within yeah, a very was, short space one, of time. One went, to, when I last saw it, was somewhere around the three million mark on mm. social media. But then, of course, they, they, they go out on all sorts of platforms that I don't even see, obviously, like, yeah. I don't know, Facebook. And, and obviously people put them into their, clip them onto their sub stacks and they, and they, they, they go out all over the place. So I've, I've got no way of, of monitoring. But yet sometimes, to my huge surprise, they, you know, they go out to you know, seven figures worth yeah. of, of listeners and viewers. Which is not actually the number of viewers, but it will be eventually. Yeah, well, we will get all, yeah. we'll get all those people watching us on the telly as well uh, eventually soon, Neil. But it is that hybrid, isn't it, of different broadcast media, and, I, I and you're think, very feel, much at the forefront of that. I, 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 I feel very strongly about uh, GB News. That obviously it's a television channel. You know, first you know first and foremost, you know here we are. You know, however many hours of the day it, it's out there rolling out uh, live, uh, but it's also it's many other things besides. And we've got a, we've got it's very much a digital presence, an online presence, and I I think that's the future in many ways. You know, there's uh, Maya Towsey that you've got on there with you. You know, a YouTuber. Uh, podcaster. Uh, there, there are so many ways now in which people are disseminating information, sharing thoughts and getting them out there. And, and GB News happily is right there in that wild west of, of the moment where it's live television, also television that people can catch up with, but it, it's, got the, it's got its huge digital footprint as well. Uh, and I think that's, a, that's an evolving story. I think it's yet to be, yet to be clarified exactly what the, what the future of broadcasting and information sharing actually looks like.